Chili peppers have been a part of Mesoamerican cuisine long before Christopher Columbus landed on the continents that we now know as the Americas. Based on archaeological discoveries in the Tehuacan Valley, the native tribes of Mexico already domesticated chilies as far back as 5000 BC. Eating dishes with fiery chili peppers is a traditional Mexican gastronomic pride, and you just can't have the full experience of their cuisine without a red face or a shirt wet with sweat. So for today's episode, we're going to have a taste of Mexico's five fiery delights. So grab a glass of milk while you still can. Do you want to talk about chili peppers? Well, let's talk about chili peppers. Stuffing peppers is a common practice around the world. It's convenient, aesthetically pleasing, and just straight up delicious. Chili relleno is one example of why this culinary technique survived, as it's a cooking style that was born hundreds of years ago and catered to the taste buds of all generations. Chili relleno is said to have its origin in the city of Puebla, where the nuns of Santa Monica earned a reputation for being resourceful. They were able to make quick recipes from whatever ingredients they had in their backyard, dishes that eventually became icons of Mexican cuisine. Chili relleno, literally translated as stuffed chilies, is one example of such culinary creativity, and the world of food has changed since then. Many chilies can be used for this dish, the most common being the poblano pepper. For the filling, melted cheese is the way to go, and the popular choices of Mexican cheeses are queso Oaxaca or the queso Chihuahua. Aside from cheese, a filling known as picadillo is also a good choice, made with minced meat, raisins, and nuts, then seasoned with canilla. To complete the dish, the stuffed pepper is then covered in an egg batter. And lastly, the sauce is served on the side, usually savory or tomato-based. A good serving of spicy chili relleno will surely give your sleepy face the right kick in the morning. If you're feeling cold on a rainy day, then maybe a warm soup is simply not enough for you. You might want a little bit of a kick with that. Mexican cuisine has an endless supply of spiciness in all forms and sizes. Chilate de pollo is a dish known for its vibrant color and also with the heat it offers that would surely take the cold out of you. What makes chilate de pollo unique is its use of a certain herb that brings out a special flavor aside from the liberal use of chili, the epazote. Also known for its English name, Mexican tea, epazote is a special ingredient often mixed with other classic spices in Mexican cuisine, and we can surely find it in our second pick. Chilate de pollo is a cross between a stew and a soup. Spices are mixed into a motor to make a spice blend. Guajillo peppers, chili de arbol, tomatoes, and tomatillos are boiled and put into a blender as the chicken slices are seasoned and browned on a pan. The chili sauce is then strained into a fine sift and poured over the chicken soup. Once cooked, it is served topped with cotija cheese and green onions. Chilate de pollo is a true Mexican comfort food, one that will clear your nostrils. Did someone say sandwich? Just like most cuisines in the world, Mexico's gastronomic repertoire has no shortage in this guilty pleasure. Sandwiches are a universal favorite, and how better it could be if we make it just a little hotter. In the city of Guadalajara, in the state of Jalisco, a popular sandwich came into existence, the Tortas Aguadas. Drowned Submarine Sandwich. That is the translation of our third pick for this list, and it surely earned its name. You won't probably believe this, but it is said that tortas aguadas was invented unintentionally. Once upon a time, in Guadalajara, a street vendor was making a sandwich. However, the sandwich slipped from his hand and it fell into a tub of salsa. It could have been a total disaster, but somehow, the customer who got the drowned sandwich liked it so much that the drowned sandwiches became an actual thing. And that's how tortas aguadas was born. Tortas aguadas is popular in other places in Mexico but it's a signature sandwich in Guadalajara. It is made with birote bread, which is also a regional classic. Birote bread is a salted bun with a crunchy crust and a fluffy interior, which pairs well with other ingredients such as chopped fried pork, chicken, beans, or cheese. It is then drowned in a special sauce and finished with onion rings, radishes, avocados, and chili peppers as the toppings. If Americans like to eat delicious hot dogs and buns during sports events, Mexicans enjoy theirs with torta ahogada. 
In Estadio Jalisco, torta ahogada is served and vigorously eaten. Although it can be a messy treat to eat thanks to the sauce, but who cares? Good food is good food, right? There's one serious topic in this spicy Mexican food list that we need to talk about. Chili con carne. Aside from tacos, most people think of chili con carne as a tradition of Mexican cuisine. There's a lot of debate surrounding it in terms of its origin, ingredients used, and what region has the best recipe. However, there is one thing that we can agree on. It has to have a spicy kick. Chili con carne is a stew dish that may have originated in northern Mexico and southern Texas. However, the dish may be older than the establishment of these regions. According to a Franciscan friar, Bernardino de Sagun, stews flavored with chili peppers were already popular in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, which is where Mexico City would eventually be located. The use of meat, or beef to be specific, was something that the Spanish colonizers introduced. A recipe from the 1850s can be considered as an ancestor of the contemporary chili con carne. It is made of dried beef, salt, dried chili peppers, pounded into bricks and left to dry, which can then be consumed by boiling it in a pot as an army ration. Chili con carne then became popular in North Mexico and South Texas, but it became a wild sensation all over the US when it was showcased at the Colombian Exposition in Chicago by the San Antonio Chili Stand. From there on, chili restaurants became popular all over the country and everywhere you go, there's a chili cook out there who claims his recipe is the best. Chili con carne experts often debate whether beans and tomatoes should belong to the dish. However, most recipes out there are usually made by combining meat with spices together with chili powder. Others like to add kidney beans, pinto beans, black-eyed peas, or black beans, while others also put tomato sauce in it topped with cheese. Chili. We finally burned our way through the delicious spicy dishes in this episode. It's just perfect to conclude it with a cocktail. Michelada is a special cocktail because it can give you the spice kick that you need, and it makes sense even if it sounds absurd. There are two stories that explain the origins of Michelada. In the 1960s, a man named Michel Esper requested to mix his cold beer with salt, lime, ice, and a straw poured into a cup known as Chavela, like a beer lemonade. This drink, which supposedly came from Club Deportivo Portosino, became a hit with the customers who began asking for Michel's lemonade. Another story says that Micheleda is a blend of words of Michela Haleda, which means my ice cold beer. Either way, both stories fit the description of this Mexican cocktail. Micheleda is made by combining beer with salt, lime, and some spicy flavor such as tajin, serrano peppers, or Worcestershire sauce. It is poured into a glass with the rim coated with salt and chili powder. That alone gives you an idea of what to expect when it touches your lips and is a drink that is far from boring. Thanks again for tuning in with us here at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. We hope you enjoyed this video and got a nice taste of the spicy dishes that Mexico has to offer. Before you go, be sure to like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. We'd love to hear your thoughts too, so leave a comment below to let us know what your favorite Mexican dish was. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.